what is going on guys welcome back to another sports talk video today and as you saw a couple days ago i started doing sports talk again with my nfl uh prediction reactions and today we're doing champions league round of 16 knockout predictions yes it's been a while since the group stage it's been like three months or two months since the group stage finished but now final 16 teams in the Champions League and it kicks off this week. I am recording this on Sunday, February 14th, so if there is any injury update or problem that happens after the 14th that I don't know about, well, I do know about it, it's just I recorded this beforehand. But either way, we're gonna get into this video going through all eight of the ties and I'm gonna say who's advancing. We're gonna do a separate video for the quarterfinals, semifinals, and eventual finals once we know the draws. But here we go. So if we wanna really start off, we can look at the groups and see what happened. As we know, Bayern and Atletico ended up advancing through the group. Bayern, it was pretty easy for them. Atleti, um, it wasn't the easiest thing, but they managed to get there. We look at the next group, we got Real Madrid and Munchen Gladbach making it, with Shakhtar making third and Inter making fourth. This was the closest group, probably the most entertaining and hardest to predict throughout. But in the end, Real Madrid probably expected first, got it, and Gladbach was probably expected to get third, but second, you can see them beating Inter. Now Group C, uh, City dominated it as we expected, and Porto got second as most people thought. Group D was interesting because a lot of people said Liverpool were going to get first, as they did, but people didn't know if Atalanta or Ajax were going to make it through, and Atalanta ended up getting second in the group. Looking at Group E, Chelsea topped the group as expected, and Sevilla got second as expected, though people were making jokes they might get third just to win the Europa League again. Group F, Dortmund topped it as we expected, and Lazio probably is the expectation for second place as they beat out Club Brugge to get that second place, but it was only by two points. Group G, everyone knew it was going to be Juventus and Barca probably making it through, as they both did. Juventus do top it, though, based on the head-to-head -head record that they had. And then Group H, well, um, uh, PSG and Leipzig made it. Um, Man United is my team, so let's not talk about that anymore. Okay, let's go back to the round of 16. So, it's kind of interesting. We got four games each week. They're definitely spread out, unlike the Europa League, where it's like every team plays on one day, because there's plenty of time for the Champions League. Europa League's in the round of 32. Let's get through each of these ties and go through it. So, we're going to start with the RB Leipzig versus Liverpool. It's RB Leipzig who ended up winning, or get, not winning, getting second in their group after beating Manchester United 3-2, to two, holding them off on a late surge, and Liverpool got first in their group, so they get matched up. We see a few things that they talk about. It's their first competitive encounter between these two teams. However, Leipzig's third English opponent in the UEFA Champions League, because they already played uh, Tottenham last year, if you remember, and then they played Manchester United earlier this year. So it does say Liverpool are unbeaten in their last five games against German sides. It is definitely interesting. RB Leipzig's only previous appearance in the knockout stages when they reached the semifinals last year. And RB Leipzig are beaten in their last six home matches in the Champions League. But RB Leipzig have only kept two clean sheets. So we kind of see, you know, Liverpool, they're always making it in the Champions League. They're always going to be usually in that round of 16. Whereas we see RB Leipzig, you know, is that newer team. They got a lot of money, and so now they're kind of working their way up to the top. And as you know, they made it to the semifinals last year. And now these are just insights based on, you know, the Champions League history. But if we want to also look at, I guess, the league per se. Um, we're looking at RB Leipzig. We're looking at Liverpool. Liverpool's slipping up in the Premier League. That is for sure. Um, they are definitely slipping up in the Premier League. They could be around, like, 5th or 6th at the time I'm recording this. Leipzig are doing okay in the Bundesliga, trying to get top 4. But if you're really looking at this game, we see a Liverpool team who's doing absolutely terrible in the Premier League. They've basically given up for the Premier League title. And then they're versing an RB Leipzig team who are looking to, despite, you know, losing Timo Werner, who's not doing well at Chelsea, they're looking to try to get to the semifinals and kind of build a bigger reputation. Um, at, amongst the clubs in Europe. And so honestly, at first you think Liverpool's probably going to win this. The way Liverpool are playing, I don't really know. But now I think Jurgen Klopp is going to probably focus on the Champions League as with everything going on. They're out of the FA Cup, out of the Carabao Cup, Premier League title race is basically over. I think they're going to try to focus on the Champions League while trying to get fourth in the Prem. And personally, I can see people saying Leipzig to win this, but I think that Liverpool will win this tie. 
Um, and I think it'll be a close one. Uh, I'm not going to do any score predictions, but maybe if I had to get one, like something like 3-2. to two. And I wouldn't be surprised if Leipzig win one of the legs and then Liverpool win the other, because it's definitely a close tie. Now, talking about close ties, the next game here is Barcelona-PSG. This team has lots of history, and it already starts talking about Barcelona have knocked out PSG and into their last three Champions League knockout ties, you know, the 12-13 quarterfinals, 14-15, and, and then, of course, the 16-17, which is the last time they really played each other in a big game. And as we know, PSG blew a 4-0 lead on an aggregate as Barcelona won 6-1 at home with Roberto getting the winner. And it, that's really the main history be, um, between them. But if we're comparing to other teams since 2012 and 2013, only Dortmund and Real have faced each other more often than Barca and PSG. So this is a common fixture in the um, you know past decade or so. And only one French club has ever beaten Barcelona at Camp Nou, and it was FC Metz back in 1984. So that was a long time. So PSG's never beat Barcelona. At, in their home stadium, but then again, it's going to be two legs. And Barcelona, they're attempting to reach their quarterfinals for the 14th consecutive season. That's actually a big streak, and honestly, it could come to an end. We have a Barcelona side who's starting to do well. They beat Alaves 5-1 just now. PSG are definitely making it close in League 1, but they're probably still going to win it. Probably still going to win it. Barcelona, you never know. They're doing really well in... La, they're doing decent in La Liga. They're doing way better than they were earlier. Barcelona are on a decent run of form. PSG's not going to have Neymar. That's the big story. So it's going to be Mbappe and Icardi and whoever else trying to help them lead it. Whereas Barcelona, you got the youngsters. You got Messi. Um, you got some other uh, veterans like Ter Stegen, even Busquets. And personally, I at first I'm thinking, okay, PSG, they're on better run. A four, and Barcelona's not doing well this season. But now you're looking at this. You're looking at PSG without Neymar. And Mbappe is, is still really, really good. But you're looking at Barcelona, who just had a masterclass against Alaves. Messi just had one of his best games, if not the best game of the season. And honestly, with the form of these two teams, I think Barcelona's going to win it. I think Barcelona's going to win this first leg pretty comfortably. 2-0, two, 3-1, um, 3-0. Two nil, nil. I see something like that for Barcelona. Second leg, obviously, is going to not be at the camp. Now it's going to be in the PSG Stadium, in the Parc de Prince, and it'll be interesting. Um, I think this could be similar to the Leipzig-Liverpool, where each team wins one of the legs, but in the end, uh, I think Barcelona will take this one. So, so far, I've said... Uh, Liverpool and Barcelona will move on. Now, Sevilla and Dortmund. Sevilla, obviously the Europa League kings. Dortmund, on the other hand, you know, they generally make the Champions League in second in the Bundesliga, but this year, it's completely different. Sevilla are definitely doing well in La Liga right now. They're trying to make themselves that top four team, because, you know, generally, Madri the both Madrid teams and Barca are the top three. So Sevilla is really establishing themselves as that fourth place team. And they didn't get third in their group to go into the Europa League, so they're in the Champions League. Now, Dortmund usually always second place, always third place um, behind Bayern this past decade or so. But Dortmund this year, they're fighting for top four. They're sixth place. Haaland and Sancho, I mean, Sancho's not doing that well. Haaland's doing fine, but the overall team chemistry is not there. If we look at some insights about this game, the only previous meeting between these two teams came in the 2010-11 group stage, where Dortmund won and they drew. Uh, Dortmund have won none, and I mean none, of their last 10 away games against Spanish oppositions. And Sevilla have hosted German oppositions 12 times, and out of those, they've only lost one, and that was to Bayern um, just a couple years ago. And this is with their sixth UEFA Champions League appearance that Sevilla have made the knockout stages. Actually, they've made it five out of six times. So it's definitely interesting here. Dortmund's obviously had built a bigger reputation in the Champions League than Sevilla. But the way you're looking at this, you're looking at Dortmund team that's had, really, they have a lot of talent. They have Haaland, they have Sancho, Brandt, Hummels, Berkey. They have a lot of talent, but it's not coming together. The chemistry is not there. You got Sevilla underrated. You got Alejandro Papu Gomez, transferred from Atalanta. He's a beast. His debut goal was insane. You got NSC, you got Munir, you got a lot of players, and I think Sevilla, the momentum, and I think the first leg being at home, I think Sevilla's gonna have a big first leg, and then I think the second leg they'll be able to ride through, and that's why I'm saying Sevilla will win this one. Now, Porto and Juventus. Probably Porto is looked at the worst team out of the 16, um, and Juventus, obviously, you know, they've been winning Serie A past few years and all that consecutively. 
But and even with Ronaldo coming in, now you got a harder Serie A. People are saying with AC Milan, Inter Milan all ahead of them. Juventus can still win it. I still think they will. But we'll see how this goes. Porto, they've never beaten Juventus, and their only previous encounter was back in 2016-17, and Juventus ended up winning 3-0. But it was because of some red cards. Uh, either way, Juventus are the only team alongside Saint, uh, Zenit St. Petersburg to have faced Porto at least twice away from home without ever conceding a goal. Uh, Juventus have reached the knockout stages of the UEFA Champions League for the seventh consecutive season, as usually expected. And Porto are the only team yet to concede a goal at home this season in the Champions League, which is definitely interesting. And the way Juventus are playing right now, they're playing okay. They're not doing well. They just lost to Napoli 1 0. So Napoli get, uh, stopped Ronaldo, Murata, and company scoring. And the way I see this game is Juventus are heavy favorites. Now, if you remember, Juventus Lyon last year. Juventus get a pretty easy draw, one of the easiest, if not the easiest, last year in the round of 16, and Lyon beat them. And Ronaldo's sad, Juventus is sad, all that stuff. And I think this is going to be a similar tie. I really think it's going to be very similar. And I do have Juventus winning this one, but I think it's going to be close. This could be decided by penalties. This could be decided by their away goal rule. But I think Juventus will come out on top, but it's going to be a battle. It's not going to be a cakewalk like some people expect. So I got Juventus but closer than expected. Now, Atletico Madrid versus Chelsea, probably one of the more anticipated matchups, at least for me. They don't have any insights for this one, um, but they do have a few things here. Remember Chelsea, you know, Lampard, no longer they have Lampard. They now have Thomas Tuchel, who's, you know, PSG, he hasn't really done too well in the Champions League. With PSG, obviously he wins the Farmers League and the Cup every single year, just about. Um, but it's gonna be interesting with Chelsea. You got a lot of talent on this team. You got Werner, you got Havers, you got Pulisic, you got Abraham, who's like their top scorer. You got Giroud, who's a beast. You got Thiago Silva. I mean, you got a lot of great players on this team. It's just about building that chemistry. Atletico Madrid, they're doing really well in La Liga. They're probably going to win La Liga unless Real Madrid or Barcelona become their prime selves in the 2010s and they win every single game and Madrid, Atletico Madrid starts slipping. Personally, though, I see Atletico Madrid as the better team here. I don't think Thomas Tuchel is right, that great in the Champions League. I still don't think Chelsea have figured it out. Yes, Chelsea won their first couple of games under Thomas Tuchel. That's just because he's a new manager. Everyone's excited. And they just slipped up uh, as of recently. So I think Atletico Madrid are going to go through on this one. I see Atletico Madrid doing really well on defense. Yes, Jose Jimenez is ruled out. But I see this as like a 2-1 on aggregate or uh, even 2-0 on aggregate for, to Atletico Madrid. As I see them moving on to the quarterfinals. Now, let's go to Lazio Bayern. Maybe Lazio are perceived as the worst team out of the 16. But here we are. Lazio and Bayern. Bayern, obviously, they just completed the sex couple. They just won six trophies in the last year. They won the league, the Bundesliga, the Champions League, the Cup, the Club World Cup, the other German Super Cup. I mean, they've won just about everything. Um, they have won everything, and they're the only other team since that, Barcelona in 2008 and 9. And obviously this is without fans, so it's completely different, but Bayern are probably the best team in the world right now. Maybe Manchester City, we'll talk about that later, but Bayern right now are probably the best team in the world. you got Robert Lewandowski, you got Thomas Muller, Neuer, Alaba, Davies. Lazio are coming into this one with very, probably, little hope that they're probably going to go through, and there's not really much more to say here, as I think Bayern are going to go through this one at ease. Now, Atalanta, Real Madrid. This is this is interesting. Real Madrid almost got to down to the Europa League. Real Madrid almost got fourth in their group. Atalanta, it was close, but they ended up, I think, beating Ajax or drawing to Ajax at the end to go through. Now, Atalanta, obviously, they do not have Alejandro Papu Gomez, who's a big uh, player, but they have a bunch of other players like Morel and Zapata, who's definitely a beast, or Robin Gosens. Real Madrid, you know, you got Benzema, you got Ramos, um, only problem with him is the cards, but besides that, he's the best defender in the world, in my opinion. You got Courtois, I mean, you have a lot of good players. Obviously, there uh, talks about Hazard, you know, ever since he came, he's been hurt, he's been eating burgers, and it's, I mean, as in Hazard, could return, could return. That could, is that good in a sense? It's good and bad, because Eden Hazard has a lot of talent, but I don't know if he works with Real Madrid and Zidane. Um, Real Madrid, though, have another greatest season. Yes, they're second in La Liga, but it looks like they're not going to win it. Zidane's basically been um, 
fired uh, at the end of the season. They're giving Zidane the rest of the season, but he's basically going to be fired unless they somehow win La Liga or win the Champions League. And Real Madrid, you would think, is the favorites for this one. And at Atlanta, you know, they have a lot of goal-scoring power. Obviously, their coach it, you know, definitely changes the game. They don't have Papu Gomez, which is a big one. But honestly, this could be maybe the upset that I have. I see Atalanta going through. I see Real Madrid, Zidane all getting mad. I don't think they're going to be able to stop Atalanta on defense. Um, I think Varane's going to make a lot of mistakes, as he tends to do. Um, the fullbacks, I don't think, are strong enough. Courtois, I don't know. I just feel Atalanta's going to go through here, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair for both the legs, but I see Atalanta going through. Now, Munchen Gladbach may be there, perceived as the worst team out of the 16, versus Manchester City. Manchester City, I mean, looking at Bayern, right? Six trophies in the last year. They've Hans Flick has more trophies than losses, which is insane. But City, I mean, they basically got the Premier League. Like, even if Manchester United or Leicester were to win all of their games for the rest of the year in the Premier League, City may still win the Premier League because they're just not going to drop points. The way they're playing is absolutely incredible. The one thing they are lacking is that striker up top, but then you got Gundogan, and De Bruyne is obviously hurt, but Gundogan is probably, if you were at an end 2021 right now, I'd probably give Gundogan Ballon d'Or. And then you got an insane defense of Diaz, Ruben Diaz. That was an amazing signing. You got John Stones. You got a lot of players in form. This team is looking like probably the best in the world with Bayern. And Munchen Gladbach, they're doing okay. They're doing okay in the Bundesliga. They're fighting for that top four. Uh, I think they're one of the teams ahead of Dortmund. Uh, but it's close as usual for Gladbach in the Bundesliga. But I don't see Manchester City having problems, really. Um, I don't see them having problems at all. Uh, yeah, they've had that curse of, you know, never winning the Champions League, and people make fun of them, but that it is not the final of the Champions League. This is the round of 16, and I definitely think they're going to go through. So recapping what I think is going to happen in the round of 16, I have Liverpool beating Leipzig in a close one. I also have Barcelona beating PSG in a close one. And then I got... Dortmund beating so or it's not Dortmund. I got Sevilla beating Dortmund going to the quarterfinals. I see Juventus beating Porto, but it's going to be a close one. I see Atletico Madrid having a defensive masterclass and beating out Chelsea. Bayern cake walking through um, the, to the quarterfinals. I see Atalanta beating Real Madrid in a high scoring affair, and I see City making it easy as they beat uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. But tell me guys what you think down in the comments below. Who do you think is going to win this one? Honestly. If I had to kind of rate these on which one I am most confident and which one I'm least confident in, I'm most confident in Manchester City and Bayern winning. I'm the least confident in Atalanta winning and probably Barcelona winning. But tell me guys what you think in the comments below. You can always put your comments down there. Say what I'm bad at. Say what I'm good at. Say what you disagree. Agree. What your predictions are. What you're looking most forward to. And all that stuff. I'm going to try to do more sports talk videos. And yeah. I'm looking forward to watching the Champions League. And I'll see you guys on that next video. So hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you like the content. Like the video if you like it because that is what it's for. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Buh bye bye if Ed Woodward would just let us sign a center back, then Manchester United would be in the knockouts. But because Ed Woodward doesn't let Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sign any center backs, we're not in the knockouts. I'm done.